What's going on guys? You're probably looking at this and wondering why are you sitting in the car? And honestly, there's no reason why. I just felt like sitting in the car, so I'm sitting in the car. And that's pretty much it. But what I can tell you is that I have a really, really cool story that I want to share with you guys and a really cool message I'm hoping will be something that you guys can find value in. And um, what that story is, is okay, so two Q&As ago, you guys asked me who was my favorite character in the Bible, who was my favorite biblical character. And that was an easy answer for me. That, that person was going to have to be King Solomon. And so I've been, since then, I've been reading a little bit more about King Solomon and kind of studying his story a little bit more, studying his history, and just kind of getting a little bit more familiar with the person that I said was my favorite character. And when I was reading through this story, I found something like really, really interesting. And this is in Kings. So basically, King Solomon was coming into his kingdom, and this is right, this is right before he became king. His father, King David, was the king at the time, and he was a really old man, he was dying, he was on his deathbed, and he had already promised King Solomon, who was just Solomon at the time, he had already promised him years prior that he would be the next king. But King Solomon had a brother, and his name was Adonijah, and Adonijah was basically going around town, because his dad was on his deathbed, going around town, throwing huge festivals and feasts and all these different things and saying that he was going to be the next king. He was basically effectively trying to take King Solomon's place which wasn't his right at all because he, King Solomon had already been promised a throne. And so King David had found out about this and eventually he just, just decided to go ahead and throw the ceremony for King Solomon and do everything that needed to be done so that he would effectively be king. And so King Solomon became king. And when he became king, he talked to his brother and he told him, like he basically told him that he was disappointed in everything that he did, but that he would have grace for him and that he would let it slide. And so later on in life, like more years go by and King Solomon has been king for a very long time and Adonijah comes and he goes and he talks to his mom. He goes and talks to King Solomon's mom. They have two different moms, but he goes to his mom and he says, Says, go and talk to your son and please tell him to let me marry this certain concubine I can't remember her name but basically a concubine is I mean in essence it's like a mistress but back then you know it's like a polygamous society and um, yeah, I don't want to get into all that but basically it was his father's concubine so this was King David's concubine who was passed down to Solomon because now he's king and Adonijah was asking King Solomon's mom to give to, to get King Solomon to give him her to marry and basically when you when you look at history if a king has a concubine and someone tries to take that concubine that's exactly the same thing as saying I'm going to take your throne that's an effort to take his throne and so King Solomon he let it pass the first time and he couldn't let it slide again so there are consequences for that but my point in the story guys is that family friends family they will try to take what's rightfully yours. Like we're all just people, and I know friends and family are a touchy subject, but ultimately they're still just people. And there'll be circumstances and there'll be times when those people will try to take what's yours even when they don't deserve it, even when it's been promised to you. They will still try to take it. And that doesn't mean that like, well, for the first time, King Solomon, he had grace. And, that, and so that doesn't mean that we have to act maliciously towards those people that try to take what's ours or try to take what we work for or try to take what's promised to us. We don't have to be mean to them. We don't have to be arrogant with them. We don't have to be malicious but what we should be doing is loving them and caring for them and showing them that you know they have a place in our hearts and when I was reading through this story I found it to be just particularly powerful because honestly in, in my own life I've had people steal from me I've had family steal from me I've had friends steal from me I've had people take from me I've witnessed like my family take from my mom I've witnessed them take her for granted and, and use her in different situations and I just found like this is something that can be applied to like so many of our lives it's not something that's just like outdated or you know like it's like it's an old story that just like there's there's no value for us still so I thought that was just really cool honestly guys whenever I was in high school I had a friend who he was like my best friend since eighth grade he was stealing and doing all of this stuff that he shouldn't have been doing and whenever it caught up with him and whenever the police got to him and stuff like that, he told them that I was the one who was doing it and basically tried to get me in trouble for it. Tried to basically put his punishment on me until they actually went, ended up going to his house and finding every single thing that was missing and stolen in his closet. And so it was that, that was just kind of like a proclamation of how like people can try to like use you and benefit themselves from you but in the end guys if you just continue to just be you and do you and and be true to who you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to be then like everything will always work out and it might take time but it will work out 
um, I just, I don't know, I just thought that was a really, really powerful story, and I hope that that kind of like gave something to you guys and put something into your lives. Uh, there's one more thing that I did want to touch on. So one thing that I kind of skipped over in this story was the fact that David, King David, he provided a future for his children. He provided a future for his son. And even when he was long gone, like that future was still intact because it was it, like he was just that great of a father. And I got an email from, let me, let me look it up, Francisco de Almeida. I think I said that right, bro. I hope I said that right. He's from um, Portugal. And basically he emailed me because his best friend, his name is Willie Tavares, just lost his father. And that's kind of why I wanted to tie that ending because, because Willie, if you're watching this man, like life's hard. And uh, you know, a lot of things happen, unforeseen stuff and like, you know, we are mortal people like I always talk about. And so none of us are gonna be here on this planet forever. And I'm so sorry to hear about what happened with your dad, man. I'm so sorry to hear that you lost him. But I just want to encourage you to find the joy in knowing what he's done for you. Find the joy in knowing that he's provided for you and that he's he's helped you and he's helped groom you to become a man and to be the man that you're going to be uh, and that this world needs. And so, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm so sorry to hear that, man. I've never dealt with anything like that myself, so I can't say that um, I know exactly what you're going through, but I can tell you that the best is still yet to come, and um, I'm just wishing the best for you, man. So keep getting it, Willie, and uh, I love you, man. I love all of you guys that are watching this video right now, and I thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, we're going to get into the rest of this video, so let's get it. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that little intro in the beginning of the video and I know it's kind of weird to have the intro uh, video right there in the middle of the video but it's all good because we're gonna get it so we getting it but here guys back by um or by popular popular request I am going to give three tips which I feel like help uh, when it comes to editing a video and just making a really good uh, production so just to jump right into it my first tip is to find a tempo and um, what that means is whenever you find a tempo in a video, just like with anything in life, all things good have a tempo. So if you're having a conversation with a lovely lady or a handsome gentleman and you find that that conversation is really stimulating and it's like going really good, it's because there's a tempo to your conversation. When you watch a movie and, it, and it's really, really good and um, you feel drawn in and you watch it from the beginning to the end, two and a half hours. It's only good. I mean, yeah, there's good acting and stuff, but it's what makes it really good and what makes you so drawn in, regardless of the good acting or not, is that there's a tempo to that movie. From the beginning to the end, there's a tempo that it follows and it streamlines all the way to the end. And that's what kind of pulls you in and keeps your focus. So when you edit, that's my biggest tip. One of my biggest tips is to find your tempo. And it even it even got to the extreme, guys, at one point when um, I was like a lot newer to this stuff and I was like editing to a metronome, like doop. Like literally having a metronome as I was editing so that I could find that tempo and really zone in and try to like, you know, just make the video progress and flow with that. And I know that there's a saying and a stereotype, at least out here in America, where a lot of people like to joke around and say that white people don't have rhythm, but I can assure you, if you are a white person out there and you're trying to edit, you're trying to make some good videos, I can assure you that you can find that rhythm, you can find that tempo, because I believe in you. I believe in white people. I know that you can do it just like you know you can do it. So let's get it, white people. Let's get it. Uh, tip number two. Tip number two is going to be consider your shots. So good editing, of course, is going to have to come in with good filmmaking. And so whenever you're doing and shooting out in the field for your video, make sure that you're considering your shots. And when you're considering your shots, what I mean is get a variety of shots. So you need to be getting close-ups, mid-shots, long shots. Um, mix it up and just get different things. Try out different angles. Try out different techniques, shake the camera a little bit, just try different things, maybe you'll come out with something cool. And so considering your shots is definitely something that's going to be really, really beneficial for you whenever you start to edit because if you don't have the footage, then what are you going to edit? So you have to make sure that your footage is just as good as your editing, if not better. So definitely consider your shots. Tip number three is to have a plan. So if you know that you're going to edit 
uh, if you're gonna edit a video for let's say let's say it's a workout edit so like you're doing a workout edit for Christian Guzman and you want to make a really good workout edit sometimes what I'll do is I'll use I'll, I'll choose what kind of song I want to use and then I'll listen to the song ahead of time and then when I'm listening to the song ahead of time it's kind of going through my head and it kind of like helps spark creativity so whenever I do actually get out in the field and I'm shooting I kind of have an idea of what would be cool for the song or what would work cool or something like that and I don't always do it that way but sometimes it works out or sometimes it helps out you can write a script you can plan out the shots that you want make sure you have that foundation and then you can go ahead and be creative with the rest of the shots so those are my three biggest and best tips that I want to give you guys right now so have a plan when you're shooting consider your shots and find a tempo when you're editing those are the biggest things that I think have really helped me to shape my videography right now I'm sitting here and I'm editing Rob's video for um, his, his official athlete, athlete video which is going to be up tomorrow if you're watching this video the day that it actually comes out which is May 25th 2016 so I'm gonna get back to this and I'm gonna let you guys get back to whatever you're doing today and I hope you're enjoying your day and yeah guys I will see you again tomorrow that's gonna conclude this video I know it wasn't like it wasn't like a variety of content it was literally like the talk in this but um, I just have a lot going on right now I'm trying to really dial in and focus on getting this video for Rob like getting it good and guys so far it's really really good it's like I'm not gonna lie it's gonna be good so tune in tomorrow on the Alphalete channel if you wanna watch this video or whenever you see this video tune in go to the Alphalete channel check it out cause this video is gonna be one for the books so we gonna get it so let's get it love you guys